What if you could wire an entire lake to track bass 24 hours a day, every 15 seconds, for years? What would you learn? Some researchers were curious and did just that. And the results probably aren't what you'd expect. So have you ever had a spot where you caught the fish really well and then you come back the next day or the next week and you're not getting bit and you're not sure, man, did all these fish just leave? Or do I just need to change color or lure and maybe I can catch them? So that's one of the biggest questions in bass fishing. Are the fish still here? Are they just not biting? How much do they move? Do they roam a lot? Does it vary by season? This study, I came across a series of studies that was done on the same lake over a number of years where they used, at the time, it was leading technology where they were able to track these fish all day, every day, every 15 seconds for over three years. So in this video, I'll break out two of the studies. The first one is a little more basic. It gives you a basic understanding. The second one kind of builds on that after a couple of years. And you can see whether these fish are staying put, whether they're roaming, how their individual behavior varies by season, and individual fish, how one fish is a lot different than another. Let's dive into it. So we'll look at two of the studies today. They were peer reviewed and published. One was published in 2007, one in 2010. The researchers themselves, a couple were from the University of Illinois, which happens to be where I went to school, go Illini. Also some Canadian universities and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was in on the second one as well. So the lake they studied was in Ontario in Canada. It's a smaller lake called Warner Lake. It's only 45 acres, but what it allowed them to do is they could actually rig the entire lake where they had sounders. They put transponders in the fish that they could track them. And normal tracking studies, the researchers have to go out, they get on a boat, they follow the fish around, they listen for the signal, they try to get close, and they can get you know, fairly close to them. This one allowed them to track exactly in 3D the depth and the area all around the fish continuously. They did it for every 15 seconds for several years, and it showed exactly where the fish were at within like a foot so that all times they can monitor these fish. So Warner Lake is pretty much set up as a research lab. It's a smaller lake, it's closed off, there's no fishing, so there's no fishing pressure or anything to distort the fish. It's also closed off where there's no stockings or fish going in and out as well. And it's a smaller lake, like I said, it has two basins. The shallower one up in the upper corner there, that's a maximum of only about eight feet deep. The main basin, the deeper part, is up to 24 feet deep. Uh, there's weed beds in the shallow, and then there's also deep weed beds as well. So pretty much your classic natural lake that you find all the way through the Great Lakes up to the northeast, so Wisconsin, Minnesota, all the way over to the New England states, and then through southern Canada. Now a little bit of the details of the fish in here, they were all adult sized fish. It didn't mention specifically the size, but they also tracked reproductive habits and stuff in other studies, so they were adult largemouth bass. Like I said, there's no fishing on this, but the researchers, being probably fishermen themselves, decided that they had to capture some bass to, uh, to put in the study, so of course they got a fish for them, which Props to them, I'd, want, I'd like to fish it too. But anyway, they caught 20 fish for this first study, and then they used a total of 30 fish for the second study, put transmitters in them, surgically implanted those, and then they tracked them for over three years. Now the first study, it was pretty basic on this one. Basically they're testing out the system and they wanted to see how much were these fish moving or roaming in each season, and then how fast were they going? Were they hauling butt all over the place, or were they just uh, slowly kind of swimming all over at a steady rate? So when we look at the results, the first thing they looked at is how much did they swim during different seasons? In this one, they only looked at three of them. They were testing to see, do they move a lot less during winter like we'd expect, or was it pretty much the same all the time? So when you look at the time periods here, they took a date that they considered fall, winter, and spring. With that first of the year, the January 1st date there, you can see the water temp was 41 degrees down there where the fish were. Uh, they, they moved actually... 7,200 feet per day, which I'm kind of surprised. I mean, that's over, that, I mean, it's approaching a mile and a half per day. And then the range there, you saw some of them moved 3,000 feet. Some of them moved over two miles during the dead of winter. And of course, this is in Canada. There's ice on the water. These fish are moving around. Now, you compare that with fall, fish are roaming like you'd expect a little bit more. But the average uh, really was about the same, you know, about 8,000, almost 9,000. And you can see that spread again. You know, 3,000 feet versus 2,200, basically under a mile up to four miles. That's a pretty big spread there. Then when you move to April, the middle of the April, and these fish, they noted, they spawn from 
the middle of May up to the beginning of June. So that's dead in the pre-spawn. Those fish on average are, are they're moving over four miles a day. And some of them though are homebodies, like 1,400 feet for a day. I mean, that, that fish is not moving very much. And then some are moving, what, seven miles there, 36,000 feet. That's, that's really trucking around. So you can see a big spread in the spring springtime. So when you look at the overall averages, fall was like 1.2 times higher than winter. So it's both cold there. They're moving not that much different. When you look at spring, though, they were swimming on average over three times more than what they are in winter. And then when you looked at some individual fish, though, you saw these big outliers. Fish number two in the study, during the day in the spring, it would swim 0.6 miles. Where like we talked about, the fish number seven that at the peak of it, it swam just under seven miles during the day. So huge difference between fish to fish. And then they also noted like, where did that fish swim? So fish two that had that smaller area, it, it was actually swimming around a smaller area. It, it didn't just swim a straight line of a half mile. It stayed in a smaller range. Where fish number seven, you know, when it swam those seven miles, was it doing a bunch of laps around? No, no, it actually swam like most of the lake. It was swimming all over the place. So it was roaming, whether it was looking for food or trying to find suitable habitat or whatever, that one was on the move and it was all over the place. So with this advanced tracking system, they could also look at how fast were these fish swimming? Were they bursting around at a high rate of speed and then pausing or stop and go or just steadily cruising? And as you'd expect in the winter time, 95% of the time, they were going really slowly, under 0.22 miles per hour. And they could still actually burst. They clocked them up to 3.6 miles per hour, actually chasing after stuff. But most of the time, they were going slowly. In average, during the winter, they would move at 0.13 miles per hour. So basically, they're covering some ground, but they're very slowly doing it. The fall that jumps up, not quite two times higher, 1.78 times higher at 0.24 miles per hour, still pretty slow. But then in the spring, the average speed that they're cruising around at, it's uh, over three times higher. They're moving at 0.43 miles per hour. And then the one other thing they noted during the spring versus the winter and the fall, winter and fall, they stayed pretty steady. 24 hours a day, it's a very just similar kind of movement pattern. Once it got to spring, the fish definitely move more during the daytime and a lot of fish showed increased activity first thing in the morning and then right before dusk kind of those key bite windows that we all fish so study one had some interesting baseline information there nothing too earth shattering stuff that we probably could have guessed right there study two though they tracked for a couple more years they added more fish to it they looked at all four seasons and that's where you start getting some interesting observations here so let's get into study two so in study two, the thing, when they track them over several years and they're tracking the same fish, the one thing they really wanted to find out is how repeatable is it in fish that individual fish during the season or during a whole year or from one year to the next, do they act the same? So is that fish roaming a lot in one spring, but then he's kind of sitting still the next spring? Or, does, or is he just a roamer and he roams all the time? Does he roam all four seasons? How does that change? Are fish kind of roamers or more stationary? Or does it fluctuate over time and during an individual season? So the first thing they looked at was within a season. In an individual fish, let's say in the summertime, if it moved a lot in the first few days of the summer, does that fish move the whole summer a lot? Or does it spend a few days sitting around, a few days moving, and then it's real random in between? So what they found out is that roaming and swim speed is pretty consistent for some seasons. Other seasons, it's really variable. Let's start off with winter. It pretty much stayed consistent across there. So fish that were sitting still during winter, they pretty much spent the whole winter sitting still. Ones that like to roam during winter, they pretty much roamed all the winter. Now, when you come to summer, it's about the same case. The fish that like to, there were home bodies that sat around, they spent most of the summer doing that. The ones that like to roam, they spent most of the summer doing that. But in the fall, by contrast, it was kind of the answer was maybe. The fish were kind of repeatable for a while, then they would change up, not near as uh, consistent as it is during the other two seasons there. And then when you come to the spring, that's not repeatable, totally random. Fish, basically, for a while, they'll be roamers. For a while, they'd sit still. Obviously, you have spawn going on. They're, they're feeding up the times when they're sitting still, not roaming as much. But spring's always kind of that season. And then also the fall, that's the most up in the air. So obviously, like we know, winter and summer, 
those fish are more consistent. Spring and fall, way less so. So this is where I think the study gets interesting. And they started looking at individual fish and they wanted to see, do these fish, were they roamers by personality or was it kind of dependent on the season and dependent on the conditions? So the first way they measured this was a fish that was a roamer in one season. Were they typically a roamer in other seasons? And the short answer on this was they were not. So a fish that roamed a lot, say in the spring, that didn't mean he was going to roam a lot in the summer, fall, winter, or any of the other months. And ones that were more homebodies in one particular season, say like the summer, didn't mean in other seasons they were going to be that same. So then another way they measured this is they looked at the same season but a year apart. So they took winter of 2005 and winter of 2006 and they looked at those fish. If one was in the winter of 2005 was a roamer, did it roam in 2006? And there was not a correlation. Fish basically, even in the same season in different years, were not the same acting as they were the year before. And then another thing they checked for was the length of the fish or the sex, being a male or female, did that matter how much they roamed, how fast they swam? In the study, it did not. There was no correlation between how far they swam and how fast they swam. So what the researchers noted here, it's been proven in a lot of studies that certain types of animals, there's a predisposed behavior. Some are more aggressive, some are more apt to be roamers and flighty. There are, just like humans, there's personalities where some people are just set off and angry quicker, some are more easygoing, some are anxious, some are more laid back. Well, with the fish, is there a trait if you're a homebody or a roamer? And what they showed here, pretty much no. It's based on environmental factors. And it's kind of what we've assumed. They probably go where the bait goes. If the temperature's changing, if the water gets muddy, they're really in a fluctuating state there in water where it's always changing temperature and flow and conditions. And it's also changing with the, you know, they eat shad and bait, minnows, bluegill, crawdads, all stuff like that. It really seems that the environmental factors really determine how much they're moving around, how much they're roaming, how fast they're going. It doesn't even matter how big or how small, if they're a male or a female. Basically, it's based on the cover, the environment, their mood, all the factors there. Really, the environment has way more impact than the actual personality of the fish. And to me, the interesting part is what you have to really keep in mind. They changed up their, their mode and personality, and there's no angling pressure on here. Imagine you put that in there. All the lake traffic, all the fishermen moving around, putting pressure on them. Obviously, that would be one more environmental factor that would change it even more. And these fish with no angling pressure, nobody around, they still changed up a lot. It kind of goes to show you that from one year to the next, one season to the next, why fishing is always different. You can never go back to the lake and they always say, don't fish history. I think this kind of goes to show that the environment, one year the grass grows in thicker, one year it's a high water year, one year it's warmer, one year it's colder, one year it rains more, one year it's drier. It's always changing. These lakes are always adapting. The fish are definitely changing too, and it's not like they're predisposed. They're pretty much just saying, hey, I'm going where the food is. I'm doing what it takes to survive. They don't have history, obviously, near as much as we do. And then the final takeaway to me here, obviously it pays to be a researcher, go out and do research. These are lakes where nobody gets to fish and they get to go catch some of these for a study. Like I want in on that. So I think we all need to figure out a way that we can uh, go study some of these private lakes. But seriously, pretty interesting stuff when they're tracking bass 24 seven, neat technology. I'm sure they're gonna be using this in future studies as well. It sounds like this lake is totally set up for studying. So I'll be interested to see some of the other studies that come out. Thanks for watching, guys.